pregnant woman was kept behind bars in an overcrowded jail for months and was even forced to sleep on the floor because she had admitted to smoking marijuana on the same day she found out she was pregnant. Now, the state of Alabama, where she was jailed, refused to release her unless she entered into a drug rehab facility. But considering the fact that she didn't have a drug addiction, no drug rehab facility was willing to take her in. So she was stuck behind bars because of this insane rule in Alabama that only pertains to pregnant women. Now, police arrested Ashley Banks on May 25th with a small amount of marijuana and a pistol without a permit to carry. Now, I think it is a serious issue when you have a gun that you don't have a permit for, but we're talking about Alabama here, so please spare me Alabama's concern about her being in possession of a weapon. Under normal circumstances, the 23-year-old from Gadsden would have been able to post bond and leave jail until her criminal trial. But Banks admitted to smoking pot on the same day she found out she was pregnant, two days before her arrest. In Etowah, uh, Etowah County, uh, that meant that she couldn't leave jail unless she entered drug rehab, leaving her in limbo for three months. Now, if you are a pregnant woman who is uh, suspected of doing any kind of drug while you're pregnant in Alabama, they have the ability to arrest you for it because they have fetal personhood laws there, okay? They consider a fetus at any stage an individual human life. And so they will do this type of punishment toward the pregnant woman in an effort to send a message about how much they care about lives, how much they care about that unborn fetus, in this case, embryo. Um, but I would say that forcing a woman in an overcrowded jail where she has to sleep on the floor as a result, probably not good for the pregnancy that these local lawmakers purport to care so much about. Let me give you some more details. Now, uh, Dr. Carolyn Suffren, who is an OBGYN, uh, weighed in on this issue, uh, and she wrote an affidavit, actually, urging the court to release Banks. She says, quote, the stress and conditions in jail and prisons, including lack of consistent access to standard prenatal care and mental health care, poor diets, poor sanitation, infestations with bugs and vermin, poor ventilation, tension, noise, lack of privacy, lack of family, and community contact can be detrimental to the physical and mental health of pretty much anyone, let's keep it real, but certainly of pregnant women, which can result in poor pregnancy outcomes for both the mother and the baby. I mean, that should be obvious. But when we talk about issues pertaining to pregnant women in this country, and we talk about conservative policies toward those women, we know at this point that it's not about life or death. It's not about valuing the life of the unborn fetus. It's really about power and control. And I think we see that here, considering the condition she was held under. Now, about six weeks into her incarceration, she started bleeding and was taken to Gadsden, uh, yes, Gadsden Regional Medical Center, according to court documents. Doctors later diagnosed her with a condition where blood pools near the wall of her uterus. And that condition actually increases the chance that she will miscarry the fetus. And so obviously it's incredibly important for her to be in a safe environment where she has easy access to medical professionals who can help her in case there's any kind of emergency. But Banks said jail officials told her that she could sleep on the bottom bunk of this jail cell because, her high because of her high-risk pregnancy. However, her cell had one bottom bunk and two women assigned to sleep in it. So the other woman used the bed, according to court documents, and Banks slept on the floor. And she continued to bleed for five weeks while she was imprisoned. She also suffered from hunger and fainting spells. She attempted to pay the $10,000 cash bail that was required for her to pay. But since no rehab facility was willing to take her in, she couldn't get out. She couldn't get out and be home as she's awaiting trial for her charges. And Chris Retton, who is an executive director of a substance abuse treatment provider, explains why she was rejected. OK, it's very, very easy, very clear. I would say that the appropriate thing for them to do is to go to a drug treatment program that matches their level of need 
residential treatment is for people with a serious disorder. And considering the fact that the country is grappling with a serious drug overdose problem involving drugs like fentanyl, for instance, I would argue that forcing a woman who admitted to smoke marijuana to uh, go into a inpatient rehab facility, rob someone else of a bed that they need in order to rehabilitate themselves from a serious drug addiction. So there are all sorts of issues with this problem. And honestly, it doesn't surprise me that this is taking place in a state like Alabama. Yeah, so this is definitive proof. Uh, anyone who claims they're pro-life uh, is full of crap. Uh, if they were actually pro-life, they would be livid about what happened in Alabama. But they're not livid at all. They love it. Um, so it, it proves their actual motivation. Look, so Anna told you, the woman starts bleeding. I mean, if you're pro-life, you should be scared to death that she's going to lose that baby, that life that you care so much about. She continues to bleed for five weeks. No one cares. It's right-wingers who put her in jail. The right-wingers love oppressing her. They love punishing her. Because the point of abortion isn't to protect children or life. The point is to oppress women and for men to get back on top and go, yes! You have to do what we tell you from now on. You remember when we used to beat you around and control your whole lives? Yes, we'll get to control your lives again. But wait, how about the baby? I thought you cared about the baby. She's bleeding. She's going to lose the baby. I don't, I don't care about her. She's just stuffed in a prison and she has to follow men's orders. Great. Yeah, right wingers, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. You're and not going to, there's not going to be a, hold on, Anna. There's not going to be a single right winger who gives a damn about her there's not gonna be a single person who's pro-life who cares about her or a baby because they're all goddamn liars i'm gonna add one more thing from vice she was forced to sleep on the floor due to overcrowding as anna explained she said even after being diagnosed with a condition that heightened her risk of miscarriage so they know they know it heightens her risk of miscarriage theoretically they say, oh my god if that happens hey wait are we gonna charge the warden with murder if that happens because you guys say it's a life, it's personhood. Are we going to charge the warden with murder? Of course not, because he's a right winger. She's poor. And oh, the whole point was oppression. So right wing, just be honest for the first time in your lives. You don't care about her. You don't care about her baby. All you want is oppression. Yeah, I mean, I think this story, as you mentioned, is definitive proof of that. And I think it's important to understand that this is not something, this is not an isolated incident. This is something that we've seen in other red states. And you have to also juxtapose the way, let's say, suspected murderers in Alabama are treated relative to pregnant women who are suspected of using drugs during their pregnancy. So in Alabama, if you are a pregnant woman suspected of doing drugs, you can't just post bond and go home and await your trial. But there are literal rapists and murderers who get to post bond and then go home and await trial. Literally, I'm not kidding. Pregnant women in Alabama are the only ones that this policy applies to. They treat women in Alabama, pregnant women in Alabama, their justice system treats them worse than suspected murderers and rapists. And the other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, you know, Alabama has all sorts of issues here. So uh, the conditions in these jails are, of course, incredibly unsafe. Researchers for the National Advocate, Advocates of Pregnant Women have tracked more than 150 chemical endangerment cases involving women in that jail that she was being held in since uh, 2010. Alabama also leads the nation in arresting women who use drugs during pregnancy, according to reporting from the Marshall Project, The Frontier, and AL.com. The women who used meth while pregnant and then suffered a stillbirth, a woman uh, who uh, suffered a stillbirth, was actually sentenced to 18 years in prison as a result. And so, look, I'm not trying to make the case that we just have like a hands off, who cares approach when it comes to people grappling with serious addiction who happen to be pregnant. But if you genuinely care about their lives, or the lives of their unborn babies, you don't want to create a system in which women are terrified to seek treatment. Because if you're in Alabama, you're pregnant, and you have a drug addiction, seeking treatment could mean a prison sentence. And that is incredibly counterproductive and insanely cruel.
So yeah. So to, last uh, two things here. I mean, look in the country, we have this insane disparity. It's just maddening. In New York, LA, San Francisco, you could hit a perfectly innocent person in the face with a brick and walk out of jail scot free. In Alabama, you smoke a joint while six weeks pregnant. It's not advisable to do, but it's not the end of the world. No, that's it. We're going to stuff you in a prison, have you bleed out, uh, and put you in a catch-22. So, I mean, there's just no logic anywhere to be found in any state. It's just mad. And then the last thing is the catch-22 about abortion in in this, uh, I'm sorry, in uh, about uh, rehab in this story is unbelievable. So you have to go to rehab, otherwise you can't get out of prison. You're not allowed to go to rehab. Well, then what the hell do you want her to do? What do you want her to do? And the reality is they want her to suffer in prison because they're sick. The suffering is not the bug, it's the feature. That's how right-wingers think.